A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. The great natural resources of the western United States brought wealth to many of the early settlers, but their prosperity was only won at the price of hard work. There were other men who came to the early west who found the price too high. Outlaws and confidence men swarmed to the new territory, but in the masked rider of the plains they found an enemy who would give them no quarter. Astride his great horse Silver, he fought crime and criminals through the length and breadth of seven states. And it was he, more than any other man, who brought law and order to the lawless frontier. Now return with us to those thrilling days of yesteryear when adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the gold country! Saddles waiting on the trail ahead! Hail, Silver! Away! As our story opens, two men, both dressed like Easterners, are sitting at a table in the cafe at Kimberley and... Uh, I tell you, Ransom, we should call on Mr. Faber tonight. This late? You realize what time it is? I realize this deal is too important to take chances. Ah, uh, what's the harm in waiting? Get Faber out of bed now to talk business, he'd probably be so mad you'd spoil everything. There's $50,000 at stake. It won't run away, Bennett. No? What if Faber learns what his mind is worth? You think he'll sell for what we've been authorized to offer? How's he going to find out overnight? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Bennett, you're too nervous. Forget about it. The Blue Star will still be worth as much in the morning as it is now. And Faber will still be glad to sell out for 10000 This thing has got me nervous. I'd hate to think of what the home office would have to say if the deal didn't go through. <laughs> They'd fire us so fast we wouldn't know what struck us. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to let it bother me. Here, drink up and calm down. Don't take things so seriously. I suppose I shouldn't. Well, here's to success. I'll join you in that. Ah, there. That helped. Ransom, just how did the company get on this thing? Oh, Charlie Phelps tipped them off. The mining engineer? The best man to locate ore I ever heard of. The company sent him out this way to look over some of these abandoned mines in the quiet. He located several properties worth looking into. But he said the Blue Star is the best of the lot, and an absolutely sure thing. And Faber thinks it's played out. He hasn't an idea it's worth a penny. When Charlie investigated, he didn't bother with the main shaft at all. That old fellow's got an eye like an eagle and a brain to go with it. From the lay of the land, he saw where the vein might have cut off at right angles. How would he know that? Oh, something about rock formations and such. Stuff too deep for me. But anyhow, he took his pick and some blasting powder... Went into a tunnel that had been started on the side of the hill before the main shaft was open. And there's where he found the gold. More than there was in the vein Faber thought it played out. But if Faber is investigated for himself... <laughs> it isn't likely. They say he hasn't been near that property for months. And Charlie was slick enough to cover up anything that'd show he'd been there. I don't know, Ransom. I've got a queer feeling about this thing. As though it isn't safe waiting. <laughs> that again? But if you'll promise me we'll call on Faber first thing in the morning... I give you my word. <laughs> We'll be sitting on the porch when he gets up. Now, forget about it. Have another drink. Bartender, 
Roger, there's two more of the same at this table. Golly, $10,000. And for the old blue star. Hey, Barkeep, hold on a second. <laughs> you bet I want something. And by the eternal, I'm going to get it. Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> Never mind, Barkeep. That's a secret. Here's for the drinks I had. <laughs> Maybe I'll be in tomorrow and tell you about it. Hank, this is a double <laughs> eagle you give me. Hey, wait for your change. Keep it for yourself, Barkeep. It won't be long till I'll be having plenty more of them. What do you want? Good night. Too late to call on paper, is it? <laughs> well, when morning comes, maybe some slick Easterners will find out what too late really is. I'll stand still there. <laughs> Fella, you're carrying me to Carl Faber's place as fast as them spavin legs of yours will get us there. Now get along with you. Get up. Get up there. It was nearly noon the next day when Hank Dobbins arrived at the abandoned Blue Star Mine and reined in his horse before the side tunnel in. Oh, oh there. Oh, oh, boy. Oh. So this is where Charlie Phelps was digging around. <laughs> well, I'll bet he didn't cover up so as I won't find that vein. What the? Two horses. And gosh, what horses they are. Must be somebody camped inside. Well, I'll blame soon find out. Where will I get my pick? Stand still, blast you. There we are. Now, if there's anybody in there, I'll soon show them whose property they're trespassing on. <laughs> Doggone tunnels so low, fellas got a stoop to get inside. <laughs> Somebody there, all right. I see some candles running. Hey there! Whoever you are in there, your canton's property belonging to me. Is that your mind? Sure is. And if you're outlawed, I got a pick in one hand and a shoot nine in the other. Well, you're not outlawed, Carol. Don't you call me Carl first. Doesn't Carl Faber own this mine? Not anymore, he don't. Not, not our boss, huh? But you're mad. There's an engine with you. Me, Tonto. I got you covered. Put down your gun. We're not going to harm you. Oh, no, you don't. I ain't being talked into nothing. Heist your hands, both of you. I said put down your gun. And I said to raise your hand. Now, if you don't... Don't take that gun. Wait, wait, go. Oh. You, you get hurt. No, Kima Tommy. The gun was pointed in the air. Blast you. It was your own fault. You wouldn't believe me when I told you we weren't outlaws. You're a mess. Never mind that. Well, anyhow, I ain't got nothing on me for you to steal. And I reckon what ore you fellas could pack away wouldn't amount to much. Ore? What ore? I ain't saying. But it's clear enough what you meant. Wait a minute. I didn't recognize you at first. Aren't you Hank Dobbins? And what if I am? Well, that you were a rancher. What are you speculating in mines for? Speculating? <laughs> That's what you think. You said you bought this mine. I bought it last night. I Carl out of bed, brought up the papers, and the cash is to be paid today. I call that speculation. Buying a mine that's been worked out. Say, just who are you? Why? Well, you're a master and all, but I never heard a crook talk like you before. And you ain't looked to see if I had cash on me. I told you, we're not outlaws. Who I am doesn't matter. Well, anyhow, you're dead wrong if you think I didn't savvy what I was doing when I bought this place. Yes? This mine ain't worth no less than $50,000. And I got the word of Charlie Phelps to prove it. Phelps told you that? Just the same as. I don't understand. Tom and I have been in this mine several times and haven't seen any indication of gold. No one in the West knows more about mines than Charlie Phelps. If he told you that, he must have had something to go on. When did you see him? Well, I, uh, I didn't see him exactly. No? But I got it from some fellas that knew about the report he made on the mine. Here, give me that pick. Huh? Well, what do you I'm got... going to show you something. <laughs> this is the end of the shaft right here. If anyone had found more gold here, there would have to be some sign that they'd been looking for it. <laughs> but look again. Except for the marks I just made, this shaft hasn't been touched for months. Everything shows signs of weathering. But, but they said Charlie blasted it and covered it up. You can see for yourself that isn't possible. I was in the main shaft this morning. You can take my word for it. There's nothing there either. But, but they said that... They told you about Charlie's report. Well, they, they didn't tell me exactly. No? I sort of overheard them. You overheard two men talking about this mine, and they said Charlie Phelps claimed it was worth 50000 Oh, that's about the size of it. What did those men look like? Well, they was Easterners. One was kind of tall, with a mustache and a hooked nose, and the other was tall, too, but real heavy, and he... Hank, was... you've fallen for one of the oldest confidence games there is. Huh? Those men were Slick Allen and Tinhorn Taylor. They've tried this game all over the West. They served prison sentences twice for it already. But they call themselves Ransom and Bennett. Assume names. How much did you pay for this mine? Three thousand dollars was the price agreed on. But I ain't paid it over yet. And if what you told me is true, then I ain't gonna. Faber, of course, was working with them. But why didn't you investigate first before making the agreement? Well, the way they talked, I didn't figure I had time. That's part of the game, too. Well, stranger, I'm heading for town. I'm seeing the sheriff about this. 
And if there's any way to do it, favor and them crooks are going to be jailed. Mm-hmm. Plenty man. I haven't too much sympathy for him, Tyler. He claimed that he thought he was putting something over himself when he bought this place. Uh, but him not pay cash, him find out in time. I have an idea, Tyler. He will pay. And I doubt that anybody will be arrested oh. unless we take a hand. <laughs> Sure of what you told me, Hank? That's just what happened, Sheriff. Everybody knows Carl ain't to be trusted. This ain't the first time he's tried to sell that worthless mine of his. Carl's been mixed up in a lot of funny deals. The Sheriff, get the truth out of him. You bet I will. Here we are. You inside, Carl? Just a second. Hey, howdy, Sheriff. Hey, what's all the crowd for? You back too, Hank? And back for a showdown. Huh? Uh, we'll talk this over inside. Look here, Sheriff. I'd like to know what this is all about. Hank's got a complaint to make. It's a mighty serious one, too. Yeah? You sold me that Blue Star mine of yours. Leastways, you tried to sell it to me. Tried to? I did. I got the papers here to prove it. Gosh, he admits it. Does he think he can get away with a stunt like this? And he's got more gumption than I give him credit for. You're admitting you sold Hank the mine? For $3,000. And Hank's to pay it today. Then I guess there's nothing left to do but jail you. Jail me? What for? For swindling, that's what. You're local. You just admitted it. You did. Well, I admitted I sold Hank to mine. I never admitted I cheated him. It's one and the same thing. Doggone it, Sheriff. Ain't there no justice to be had in this town? You can't jail me without giving a reason. Hank says there was a couple of strangers in town last night that pretended to be Easterners. What about them? Now, don't pretend they wasn't in town, Carl. Because I was tending bar in the cafe when they was there and seen them myself. And right after Hank left, they rode away. Why would I say they wasn't in town when I don't even savvy what you're talking about? They was your friends. It was them that tricked me into thinking your mind was worth something. Hank, why don't you confess you haven't told the half of it? When you came here last night, I told you right out you was a fool to buy the Blue Star. You said that to Hank? I did, but he wouldn't listen. I thought it was mighty funny him rousing me out of bed the way to buy a worthless mine. I didn't want to be bothered, but he wouldn't pay no attention. I named 3000 as the price just to get rid of him. When he took me up on it, I was the most surprised man in the county. Well, if what you say is so... It is so. Ask Steve there, Leif. Hank was so all fired anxious to get my mind, he made them come over and witness the deal we made. Fellas, is this Carl telling the truth? That's the way it was, Sheriff. Hmm. What you got to say, Hank? All I got to say is Carl tricked me, even if I can't prove it. Just hold on. Seems to me, Hank, you was the one that was trying to do the swindling, coming here trying to take advantage of my ignorance. You never told me that you thought the Blue Star was worth so blame much. Well, Hank, uh, you've just wasted my time. But gosh, Sheriff, Come on, I... let's get back to Cafe. Not so fast. Huh? I aim to know if Hank's going to keep his bargain with me. Pay you that cash? I'll be a ring-tail snorting maverick if I will. Pay you 3000 for nothing after you tricking me? What do you take me for? I take you for a polecat whose word ain't no good. Why, you... Both of you shut up. You won't make me shut up, Sheriff. I got Hank's signature here on the deal we made last night. He's to pay me $3,000 for the Blue Star. Oh, Sheriff, tell him he can't do that. Go on, tell him. I'm sorry, Hank. You mean... Carl's got a case again, you all right. It'd be for the court to decide, not me. But it might go hard for you. I get tricked. I get cheated out of 3000 in hard cash. And then on top of that, I can be sued for being tricked. If that's justice, then I'm a sheep herder. Don't blame me. Are you going to pay or aren't you? I guess I'll have to. But, Carl, you'll get your yet. You just wait and see. You'll get yours and you'll get a plenty. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Hank Dobbins was forced to pay the money his bargain called for in spite of the fact that he knew he had been swindled. Our next scene opens just outside town where the masked man and Tonto have halted their horses under cover of a grove of trees. It went just as I thought it would, Tonto. Mm-hmm. Hank wanted to get rich quick. Like many others, he was so greedy for a big profit, he risked his money and then investigated. Tonto, no other feller do that. Hank's not the only one by any means. And it's not going to be easy for Hank to get his money back. Mm, that'd be plenty hard. Slick Allen and Tinhorn Taylor, of course, are a long way from here by now. And nobody knows where they went. Mm. And without them, Carl's trickery can't be proved. But you got plan. I have, Tonto. But you'll have to get that information I spoke about first. Tonto, get it. And you'd better return to town right away. I'll go back to the mine and move our things to a safer place. We may camp near the marsh. There's plenty of cover there. Uh. You'll be able to find me by reading my trail. And I'll wait in camp until you've learned what I want to know. Tonto, maybe come back soon. Maybe long time. But you wait. Right. Now get going, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. The faithful Indian returning to town shadowed Carl Faber wherever he went. He saw Carl receive the money Hank indignantly paid him. He was watching when Faber retired that night, and again when Carl rose in the morning and left his house. It was several hours later that Tonto arrived at the masked man's new camp and... Oh, Scout, oh! You found out, oh, Scout. Uh, it on stage. Leave town one hour from now. What name did Carl use? Him sent a feller named Bennett. Good. Here, Silver. Tonto, you stay in camp for a while and rest. Uh-huh. But as soon as you've slept, get back to town and keep on watching Carl. How to do that? When I've finished, I'll join you. Me not rest long. <laughs> you get back quick. Perhaps that would be best, Kimosabe. Now I'll see you again in about four or five hours. Ah. Come on, Silver. The stage leaving Kimberley for Westwood was pounding and jolting over the trail when suddenly the guard grasped the arm of the driver and pointed across the plain, saying, Milk, look over yonder. You, you see something? Looks to me like trouble. See the fellow on the white horse riding ahead of us off? Gosh, yes. Whip up your horses. Maybe this isn't a holdup. When you ain't sure of strangers, the thing to do is get away from them. I'll whip them up. Do long, Blackie. Lay into that harness, Nero. Get moving. Make tracks, you critters. I haven't smelled it is trouble. Yeah? That hombre's mad. We're not going to pull away from him, neither. Bill, just look at that white horse stretch out. He don't hardly bother to touch the ground. They'll meet us, all right. Get your rifle ready. I've got it. Get up. Flash it, get going. Gosh, we might just as well be tied up to a hitch rack for all the good this is doing us. I ain't worried as long as there's just one of him. Stop that stage! What's he yelling? He said to stop the stage. Yeah, like fun we will. Get up! Get along with you! Come on, Silver! I'll draw a bead on him. See if you can't drill him. Yeah, never even come close. How's the fun to aim with this stage bouncing around the way it is? Pull up those horses! Get away from us! Get up! Get up! Go away or I'll fire again. Don't raise that rifle. I'll show you. Take this, you... Ah. What happened? You wounded my rifle. He smashed my rifle. Now draw up those horses. Not by a blame sight. Get up. Get up. And I'll stop the for you. Come on, old fellow. He's grabbed the harness. Get up. Get along with you. Pull back, Silver. Pull, pull back, Silver. Pull back, Get up. Over. Get up, Blackshirt. Get up. Ah, that doggone hawk slowed down the whole team. You low down, fuck. Ah, you'll do what I tell you. You can't There's do it. There's a mail sack under your feet, guard. Throw it down. I'll do nothing of the kind. Quick. That was a warning. Uh, the next won't miss. You, you better do like he said, Al. I guess. Uh, here you are. But you'll pay for this. Well, you've got the mail. There's nothing else on the stage to steal. Now can we drive on? There's only one thing here I want. We ain't got Wait, no... you can take the rest with you. What in blazes are you after? That's my business. But I can tell you this, this isn't a robbery. Expect us to believe that? I don't care whether you do or not. 
Here it is. Now catch the mail sack and get going. I got it. On your way. Come on, Milk. When I get to Westwood, we'll report this to the law. Get up! Get up, Hero! Up with you, Blackie! Oh, hey, over! Over! With the package in his possession, the Lone Ranger raced back to town. There, timing his arrival so that he reached Kimberly after dark, he rode to the sheriff's office. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, boy. Wait for me, boy. Hey, what is it? Sheriff, take this. Ah. I've got something to tell you, and you're to listen. I'll... Keep your hand away from that holster, Sheriff. Who are you? What do you want? First of all, that package there. Keep it safely. But that's me. I'll explain. You'd better put... You come quick. Tonto, how did you find me? Mr. Silver, you come. All right, Tonto. What in blazes is this? Who's that redskin? What's this package for? Hey, wait! Put that package away and don't let anybody see it. I'll be back later to explain. But you... Do as I say. What is it, Kimosabe? He think Carl get ready to leave town. To leave town? I didn't expect that. Impact close. And we've got to stop him. Steady, Silver. You hurry. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Me not want to follow him. Without you, no. We won't follow him, Tonto. What we do? We'll give him some orders. And then we'll see that they're obeyed. Uh -huh. Come on, sir. Get him up, Scout. Plan to meet Slick and Tinhorn. If he had, he wouldn't have sent that package. He must have had another reason for wanting to leave. Here, I'll show some more. Show, over, over. Who's there? What do you want? Come on, Tonto. Uh, How about? Where did you think you were going? What's it to you? How do you know I plan to go anywhere? Tonto, so are you packing up? What if I was? Just this. You're not leaving town. You're staying right here. But I tell you... If you make another attempt to get away, I'll stop you again. But the folks in town, they, they all figure I cheated Hank Dobbins. i got to get away till things quiet down. So that's it. They've been talking, making threats. There's no telling what they'll do. You're staying here anyhow. No, you can't make me. I'll do... I'll make you two promises, Carl. And I'll keep them both. Promises? The first is that no one in town will bother you. I tell you, The I second got... is that the next time you try to leave town, we'll be here to stop you. Wait, wait, listen. I'll get back inside. No. Mm. That fixed him. Now, Tonto, keep an eye on him. Going back to talk to the sheriff again. And when I return, we'll take turns guarding this place. More than a week went by, and a dozen times Carl Faber tried to escape. But each time he discovered that either the masked man or Tonto was on hand to prevent it. We see him now on the evening of the tenth day as he peers through the window that looks out on the street. Too dark to see him even if they was around, blast him. It's enough to drive a fella loco. Never knows where they are, what they're up to. If I could just get a clean shot at one of them and... What's that? Oh, the back door. If it's the red skin or the masked man, I'll show him. He's done. There. Just one shot. Who's there? Open up. Take the Redskins' voice or the mask down, please. Who are you and what oh, are you? Oh, you double-crossing skunk. Slick. And here's Tin Horn. I'll take that gun. <clears throat> you are looking for us, huh? Waiting to drill us, is that it? What's the matter? What are you fellas doing here? As though you don't know. Hold out our share of the cash you've gotten and pretend you don't savvy why we come back. That's not so. We've been I waiting can... over a week for that cash you promised to send. And not a sign of it. You figured we'd be scared to come back here to claim it, didn't you? Well, this should prove different. I sent you the cash. Honest, I did. I sent it the next day. It went out by stage. Save your lying for someone that'll believe you. But you got to believe you me. Even meet us with a gun in your hand. Uh, I can't figure this out. You I don't need I... to. All you've got to do is hand over that cash. And this time we'll take all of it. Wait, I... You heard us. The cash, quick. Where have you got it hid? Please, wait, listen. 
There's something wrong about this. I suppose now you'll say that Hank didn't fall for our scheme. You think we didn't hear about him buying your mine for $3,000? The news got around all right. Hank fell for it. Sure he did. I ain't claiming he didn't. I already told you I sent the cash. <laughs> it must have slipped your mind. There's only the 1000 here I kept for myself. I can show you. Here, it's in my desk. Hey, I went... What's the matter? That window. There's someone outside. What? The masked fella. What masked fella? The fella that... Not just the masked man, you cook. The law's here, too. Come on in, fella. Hey, Trap. you did this, Carl. Carl's not to blame. You trapped yourself. What is... Slick, Carl sent you the money, all right. But the masked man got it back and give it to me. There, I told you. We knew you'd be coming back to find out why you hadn't got your share. And you cooks not only come back, but you said enough an hour here and to send you to jail for a good long time. Slick, run for it. Take one step and you'll stop lead. And I'm just itching to pull this trigger finger. Thank God. It's... But you fellas ain't got nothing on me. I can't help what they done. I just... You're in just as bad as anybody else, Carl. So stop your yelling. And give me back the rest of my cash. I got the 2,000 the masked fella gave the sheriff, and now I aim to have the 1,000 you got. It's in that desk. It better be. I heard Carl say it was when I was uh, listening outside. But, Hank, now you got your cash back, you'd better take some advice. Huh? Like the masked man said, the next time you figure you're going to get easy cash by making a fool out of some fella, be blame sure he ain't making a fool out of you instead. Come on, silver old fellow, and the stage hold up the auction. We've got to hurry. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.